Years ago, Star Citizen made a bold claim. CIG claimed the game to be the best damn space sim ever. That is a daunting statement, and one the game hasn't quite lived up to over the years. The flight model has gone through monumental changes over the last decade of development, and for some, it certainly scratches the itch to relive the glory days of space sims like Wing Commander, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, and many others. Despite the long-awaited weapon and component rebalance scheduled to come out sometime in the future, the dogfighting in the game has suffered since the weapon nerf in patch 3.14. Could there be a ship, a fighter, that not only rekindles the dream of space combat, but reminds us of one of the most iconic ship designs ever conceived? Enter the RSI Scorpius. Welcome back, friends. I know it has been quite a while since I did a ship review, and there are reasons for that, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. It is high time that I did a proper review on the Scorpius and its variant, the Scorpius Antares. Well, at least before I CCU the Antares. The RSI Scorpius was introduced in Patch 3.17.1, about a year after it was spotted in-game during Patch Alpha 3.13.1 at the RSI Expo for 2951 Invictus. It instead appeared a year later during 29. 52 Invictus and is set to have its one year birthday in just a few short days at the 2953 Invictus launch week. RSI, a manufacturer known for the Constellation series of ships, the Aurora series of starter ships, the Quantum Lane hijacking Mantis, and the three axle ground vehicle, the Ursa Rover, was due for a new fighter. As the original Quantum Drive innovators, RSI was missing a key element to their lineup with a heavy fighter. In fact, there are very few heavy fighters in the game to begin with. Aegis has the Vanguard series, and Anvil has the Hurricane, and one day the F-8 Lightning, but for now that's really about it. Not only did RSI need a more robust fighter, so did the game. The RSI Scorpius was designed by RSI's Applied Innovations Division in the Killian System, which is home to the UEE Military Industrial Complex of Shipyards and Training Facilities, and also home to Naval Station Headquarters MacArthur and UEE Marine Headquarters on Corin. The Scorpius was put through its paces by the Elite 999th Test Squadron, operated by the UEE Navy, and was given glowing reviews. The main feature of the Scorpius is the rail-mounted remote turret that can only be operated by the gunner sitting behind the pilot. The turret can be in two different positions when it unleashes its impressive four size three weapons, which by default are CF-337 Panther laser repeaters. On top of the ship, in its offensive configuration, it has the ability to shoot forwards and upwards as well as a little bit side to side. In the defensive configuration, with uh, the turret moving on a rail to the rear of the spacecraft, it's able to fire at targets behind the ship and at a minimum downward angle, just not enough to make it a very good ground assault ship. The Scorpius also boasts an impressive four size four missile racks holding four size two missiles each, giving it a total of 16 size two missiles in the stock configuration. And let's not count out the pilot, as the Scorpius has even more weaponry at its disposal in the form of four size three hard points on each of the four wings, set up in an X-wing configuration. And they all come gimbaled stock with size two CF-227 Badger laser repeaters. To round out the components, the Scorpius sports a single size two military grade C full stop shield. It has twin size one Regulus military grade C power plants to feed all those weapons and double polar military grade B coolers and just an average EOS civilian grade C quantum drive, which is kind of a disappointment that it doesn't come with a faster military drive. The Scorpius is no slouch in the speed department either, coming in with a blazing 218 meters a second SCM speed and a 1250 meter a second maximum speed. The ship has four main thrusters pushing 2.32 Gs each, 
eight maneuvering thrusters at 0.8 Gs apiece and two massive retro thrusters that have the same power of the rear engines at 2.32 Gs each. This allows the Scorpius to turn, burn, squirm, and stop with ease. Classified as a heavy fighter, the Scorpius sports 43,660 hit points and 9,000 hit points for the shield. It has a fairly large electromagnetic signature of around 10,000 and an infrared signature of 4631, which really eliminates it from being a stealthy assassin. The armor it currently has rejects around 53% of physical damage as of 318.2. In comparison to other heavy fighters, it is smaller than the Vanguard, and it also has half the shielding, but it has more weapons, a better turret, more missiles, it has a few more hit points, it's noticeably faster and more maneuverable, but it has less fuel capacity as it is a smaller ship. It also has a much slower stock quantum drive because the Vanguard is size 2 quantum and the Scorpius is size 1. The Scorpius also requires two crew members to operate at peak performance, whereas the Vanguard really only needs one pilot even though there is a turret, and the Vanguard also has access to a size 5 hardpoint. The Scorpius can be operated solo, and when that is the case, the remote turret cannot be used by a solo pilot, as there is no ability to slave the turret like on a Hornet. In comparison to the Anvil Hurricane, which isn't thought of by most people really to be a heavy fighter, due to its low amount of hit points at just 18,586, compared to the Scorpius' 43,000, the Scorpius has more pilot guns, although they are smaller, and it has the exact same turret guns as the Hurricane, but the Scorpius has the option to go defensive. The Hurricane also requires two people to obtain max performance, similar to the Scorpius. The Hurricane is slower than the Scorpius and less maneuverable, having comparable size 1 components and shields, which is a surprise. The Hurricane has less missiles to work with at only four size 2s, and it relies on the bigger firepower of its size 4 weapon hard points to do damage. Pound for pound, the Scorpius, in my opinion, is the superior heavy fighter to the Vanguard and the Hurricane, but it's not going to hold a candle to the F-8 Lightning if the rumors are true when that ship comes out. If you are a solo player, I would recommend going with the Vanguard, but if you want a decent solo heavy fighter that reminds you of Star Wars, and then you can enjoy with a friend, get a Scorpius. The Scorpius also features internal storage and an external weapon holder supporting two rifles, two pistols, and two gadgets like a multi-tool or a medical gun. The Scorpius can be purchased in-game at New Deal Shipyard in Lorville for about 2.8 million Alpha UEC, which I think is a fair price. In real life, it goes for $240 standalone or $220 war bond during time-limited sales like the upcoming Invictus Launch Week 2953. Okay, now I suppose it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. CIG did such a great job with the Scorpius, it is quickly becoming one of my favorite ships. I mean, who doesn't love the iconic X-Wing from Star Wars? But then they made the Scorpius Antares. The Antares is a variant of the Scorpius Heavy Fighter, and instead of a cool rail-mounted turret, it is equipped with an EMP device and a quantum jammer in place of that turret meaning A, the EMP and the jammer don't work without a gunner or a backseater, and B, engaging the EMP and the quantum jammer is really the only job of the gunner, hitting button A or hitting button B. Its purpose, I understand, is for squad tactics, not letting an enemy escape by trapping them into a fight, but it's so much firepower that's lost without that turret. The silver lining here is that the Antares is tougher than a Mantis, but due to game mechanics of crime stats and using EMP devices and quantum jammers, especially in monitored space, it's just not a fun ship to play with. Seriously guys, I bought it when it came out and I think I've used it twice. My org mates would rather sit on the bed of an Aurora than fly backseat in the Antares. The Antares does have some upgrades over the Scorpius though. It is faster with an SCM of 238 meters a second 
at a max speed of 1,303 meters a second. It is less maneuverable in Pichang Ya, but it does have a faster roll speed than the Scorpius. It has the same amount of hit points and toughness as the OG Scorpius, as well as the same shields, coolers, and quantum drive, but it does come with a bigger electromagnetic sig signature and the requirement of an extra power plant so it can quantum jam and EMP your enemies. The missile loadout is the same, as is the thrusters and the 53% physical damage reduction of the armor, but the drawback is losing that turret. A pilot has the same four guns as the stock Scorpius, which isn't bad, but, well, I'm not gonna say it was a cash grab, but it kind of feels like a cash grab. The Antares can't be bought in game yet. It does retail for $230 standalone or $210 war bond during time limited sales. So it is cheaper than the Scorpius, probably because it's not as good. Finally, to round out the Scorpius and the Antares, they have a plethora of paint jobs available. Besides that beautiful stock gunmetal look they have, they have the white, gray, and orange avalanche livery, that OD green, gray, and yellow blight livery, the metallic pink lovestruck livery, which is only available during Coromor, a Valentine's Day event, the stunning metallic red, gray, Red Alert livery, which is a limited edition. The striking yellow and orange Shock Force livery. The concierge only Stinger livery with slate and dark gray accents and the orange Scorpion decal. The teal and gray Storm Cloud livery. The white, orange, and gray Sunburn livery. And finally, the Tiburon livery, featuring two rows of sharpened teeth flanking the cockpit, very World War II-esque. This paint job was limited to concierge backers only, and it is a limited edition. Well, that is the lore and deep dive section of the video. Now it's on to the flight section, where I will take these ships out to show you what it's like to fly each of them as the pilot and as the gunner. After that, we'll do a quick review of the optimum loadouts for 318.2 slash 319, and then we'll do some cinematic chase camera dogfights of these ships as they compete for kills. Wrapping up the video will be my final analysis and recommendations of each X-Wing. I mean, Scorpius. Please don't sue me, Disney. If I've earned your like and subscribe on this video at the end, please go ahead and do so, and if you are interested in hanging out or joining the B team or doing some chill mining Java with Java, please join us on our streams every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time or Sundays at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. You can find us at our Discord, which is in the link below. Let's make our way up to the RSI Scorpius. This is the cock ship. Uh, it is not the... Oh, I hate this patch. It is not the Antares. Um, so, I haven't done a video of Port Olisar in a while, and I've, I wanted to definitely do one. Let's, I guess, see what we can see. Uh, it is the stock paint scheme here. Um, you see there is kind of a yellow cockpit up there. We're going to see a lot more of this ship from space. Um, but I just kind of want to give you the highlights, I guess, from the ground. So it is a symmetrical ship. Uh, the wings are spread back right now, but they do open up in an X-Wing type configuration. Uh, you can see our missiles right here. A uh, very cool kind of missile pod right there. And same thing on the port side of the ship. Here is the intake slash retro thrusters on the ship. Now, it's been a while since I've flown this myself. Those those are the mechanisms that the wings actually kind of come out on. I just have a weird lag skips. 318 is not my favorite page. Here we can see uh, the, the gimbaled weapons here, a CF-227 Bagger laser repeater. There's one on each wingtip. Them four in total for the pilot. 
we see the top turret? Sort of. We can kind of see it up there. And that's got the four size threes. Coming into the rear of the ship, it looks like it was salvaged or something. It was just claimed. So these damage models being here, I'm, I'm not sure what's up with that, but uh, I don't like it. Huh? You can hit that access button right here and uh, out pops like a little elevator with, uh, I, is this the quantum drive? Power plant, something like some kind of component that I can't actually access, but uh, yeah, you can get to that there and do some maintenance one day. I just, ah, uh, me that it looks like it's damaged when it's actually not. Um, what else do we have on here? Some cool, I mean, the detail on these ships is just so unbelievably good. There's access to another ship component. Um, not sure what that is. Not sure I want to mess with it. Looks like there's life support in that one. This one, oh, that was the battery, so... And then this one, it doesn't really say what that goes. Uh, What's this area here? Okay. So that one's definitely a uh, nice one. That's the jump drive, so maybe that's the quantum drive right here. But it is nice that we actually have access to all these things on our ship. Coming over to access here, another component. Um... Very nice. So you can see that there's there's some foresight in here. There's that's the power plant. There's some foresight in here that we're going to be doing some engineering gameplay at some point in the future. And I'm sure, CIG didn't want to have to redo a bunch of things on this ship. Uh, here is uh, one of the ancient exhausts. Anger, it's marked. It has a tricycle landing gear configuration, and uh, there, I know there's a weapon storage rack somewhere probably by the front of the ship Let's see storage right there access so boom so there we go we have uh actual internal ship component storage just like you would have with a lot of other ships uh, more power plants over here There's another access button right here. Avionics, it looks like. And then there's the equipment over there. So let's close that guy and let's open the equipment access. Is this the equipment? Yeah. So in here we could, I don't think I can't pull out my gun right here, but uh, this is where you could store a rifle, a pistol, a couple med pens, something like that. Um, you're going to have to leave that stuff in your ship one day in the future before you enter a city or certain stations. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to the, you see there's different options here. Oh, uh, enter pilot seat and gunner seat. Uh, let's go ahead and real quick just enter the gunner seat. When we fly this around solo, uh, obviously I'm not going to be in here, but I just wanted to show it to you. Why does the head always turn that weird way? Ooh. Let's power on. Just you? No, of course not. And it's not very light out here, so apologies. I don't have a... Okay, so we have like a single MFD over here. Um, not much else besides exit ship. Deploy, which when we hit deploy, You'll see the turret cycle its way back, which is awesome. And uh, one of my favorite things about the ship. And then when we enter the remote turret, we can see behind us. And we do have a little bit of down movement, uh, but mostly it's it's kind of behind us. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Let's go ahead and redeploy the turret to well retract the turret. Sorry. We can't. Oh, can we be in it while it moves? Yep, sort of. Hey, there's somebody landing. 
Right, so now we're facing forward of the ship. We have 360 degree movements. Uh, wings are folded back still. This thing can fire with the wings folded back, unlike the pilot weapons. So we're going to go ahead and exit the gutter seat. Just wanted to show that off real quick. There we go. Wish I could just hop into the pilot seat from there, but alas, it's not how it works. You can see some of our uh, thrusters right here as well. Okay, now let's not beat around the bush anymore. Let's hop into the pilot seat. Let me show you guys what it's like to fly. We'll do a cockpit tour here after we get into the alpha into space. All right, the awesome flashing HUD and our canopy closed. Okay, we're Robert Space Industries. Let's go ahead and we will turn VTOL on and we will pull up slowly. We'll go ahead and retract the gear and you'll see the wings spread out. Very cool. All right, so now we're flying around in space. Give you a top view of this ship. Well, we'll pan around from the outside anyway. You can see it's got those four weapons on all the hard points there and it's big turret on top. It is a really fantastic looking ship. One of my favorite games growing up was playing X-Wing, TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, all those type of games. Let's go ahead and fire the weapons. You can see there's the four weapon groups up there. Pretty awesome. Top of the cockpit. And we can see they have pretty good uh, convergence point there. It is, they are gimbaled. I know most people just put size threes on there. Um, OK, let's take a tour of the cockpit now while we're just flying around. Um, we, we do have uh, just two multifunction displays. The loadout is ship status and your target, which is ideal for, for this. Uh, for only two layouts. This guy over here is very light. It says open pilot canopy. Uh, this button over here is self destruct. I don't think we want to hit that. Um, looks like weapons off is on there as well. I do like that the buttons are highlighted green, the ones we can actually hit. This guy is, oh, it's for retract so we can uh, track the. I don't know why the pilot would definitely want to do that, but. Uh, power off. Maybe it's the wings. Let's try it. Let's hit it. Yeah. So it's just for the wings with the gear up. And I believe it is. What is it? Alt K? Yeah. Alt K on your keyboard will de deploy and retract its wings. What other buttons do we have? We have power. We have engine over here. On the right side, we have tackle your HUD, disable couple flag, G safe, cruise control, proximity flight assist, quantum nav display, and spool your quantum drive. So a lot of buttons on here. There's also an eject down there. So yes, the ship does eject. Okay, so that is the basics of the cockpit of the Scorpius. We do have 40 uh, flares and five chaff. I hate that they rename those. And with uh, stock weapons here, we have 63 shots per repeater. Let's max that out. Turns into 76. Completely maxed out. And yeah, go back to stock. So let's actually quantum this bad boy to where are we going to go? It looks like we're going to sell it. So I'm going to go ahead and quantum to selling and I will meet you there and we'll do a little bit of flying around and see how the ship performs. All right, folks, so we are here at selling and have a lot of speed coming in here. Now we're just going to do some flying around and, and 
see what it feels like in both first and third person. So the ship does have quite a lot of uh, a lot of power here in Selen's thin, at thin atmosphere. We're doing uh, upwards of 500. Um, we max out. Looks like we can probably get even faster. Which I gotta be careful. I don't blow myself up. So it, the the pitch and the yaw feel okay. Uh, the yaw is a little slow. The pitch is a little slow, but it, it is supposed to be a heavy fighter. The roll actually for a heavy fighter feels really good, and it's very responsive. Changing directions here, using boosts. We can hold down boost for quite a while uh, before it really starts draining into the reserves as well. Let's go ahead and head into third person here. Zoom out. I don't love this rear view. There we go. Now we're on top of it. zoom out a little bit, right? So flying around selling it. I I've flown the Scorpius a number of times and I've never really had an issue with how it flies. I've always been quite impressed with uh, its its ability to maneuver. Uh, it is a little bit smaller of a ship compared to something like a Vanguard. Here's the weapons converging. They go quick. Go ahead and do a loop. Hey, Crusader. Pretty darn good. We'll do an aileron roll. Pretty darn good as well. So flight mechanics wise, this thing is is slick. I'm enjoying it a lot. Let's actually get out into space and we will just real quickly test the speeds, really, because it's going to perform better in space anyway. Although I am heading past 800 here. Uh, 900. Looks like we can. Maybe that's just selling really thin atmosphere. Yeah, let's get max speed up on this thing. Passing 900, and it should be around 1250. And 1249, 1250. Close enough, right? Good enough for government work. All right, and let's get a side shot here, and we will take it back down okay so those were intakes that i was looking at because those are retro thrusters right there in front of the ship very powerful and it is taking quite a long time to come down but we can use boost i don't know why i didn't have that turned on but yep we use boost to lower so flying in space is, is also quite maneuverable. Extroll ya. For a heavy fighter, I like it. All right, so real quick. I'm going to come to a stop since I'm in actual space. And we're just going to hop out of the seat. We're going to hop into the, the gunner seat and just fire the weapons. Okay, I hate EVA. <laughs> Look at those weapons. Oh, those are nice. That's a nice turret. Let's see. Hop in there, buddy. 
Okay, power was already left on. And so from a front view, we're, we're going to go ahead and enter the remote turret. We're facing front already. You can see the Panthers have 101 ammo. And then they recharge quite quickly. Even with the wing spread, we still have a pretty good firing arc left and right. Of course, we can go full up, full back, full down, things like that. Or, or not full down, full up, full front, full back, things like that. Um, if we want to go ahead and deploy. See, the turret is moving. It's now locked into the back of the ship. Really cool ability here. Uh, not much movement back there, but still pretty awesome. All right. Let's retract. Let's head out. So next up, we're going to grab the Scorpius here and we're going to go take. Oh, my God. That, that would be smoother. We're going to go take her on a dogfight. Uh, just solo mission. Uh, we do have some footage already of uh, in the chase camera dogfight for two people uh, in this ship. And that, that'll showcase the immense power of this uh, spacecraft. So for right now, we'll, we'll solo it, and I'll catch up with you as soon as we uh, grab a mission and head over there. So unfortunately, the only mission that was available at the time here is in atmosphere, although it is selling its low atmosphere. I tend to enjoy the space battles just a little bit more. We're going to turn our gimbals on. Let's bring our missiles up. 16 size 2 Tempest. And there's our target. Hope the missiles don't get him first. Oh, we got a friend. Shoot the missiles at his friend. Trying not to turn MVG mode on, but we might have to if it gets a little crazy. The Gladius. A little bit laggy today. Oh, nice. Got him. Pretty, pretty easy. What is this guy? And Aegis Avenger. We're actually going to see if we can get him in third person. A little more cinematic. Oh. Why are you stopping? I don't know why the computer does that. Okay. Oh, you're making it no fun. Okay. Well, call the vultures because now they can go salvage. Oh my God, I got a crime stat. Of course I got a crime stat for doing nothing wrong. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, do I dare I risk going back to Port also? Even though I got money. Um, okay. Maybe that wasn't a computer player. I don't know, but it sure felt like it. Well, with that being said, I guess I, guess I need to uh, figure out this crime stamp problem. And uh, I will 
see you guys on the next go around uh, where we're going to grab the Scorpius and Tares. And yeah, we're going to fly it around a little bit and just go from there. So stick around. Well, OK, everybody, we're back. Uh, $32,000 fine for that CS2 crime stat. But we are here with the uh, Scorpius and Tares. As you can see, it's it's almost I almost identical to the RSI Scorpius. Same type of missile loadout, same uh, wing configuration, same weapons on the wings. Um, same type of access components, all that stuff. It has one more power plant because it has to maintain that quantum drive and the or the quantum jammer and the EMP device, which you can see there is no turret up there, sadly. Um, but you know, I already gave you the, the walk around tour with the Scorpius. This thing is literally the same thing. Let's go ahead and enter the pilot seat. The Antares has more top speed and a faster SCM speed than the Scorpius. It also uh, has a little bit better roll, but not as good of pitching yaw. So it's, it's kind of strange how the flight statistics and maneuvers are lined up. If you haven't already guessed, I am not very fond of this ship uh, or this patch <laughs> due to the insane amount of lag and everything going on. Looks like there's a bad guy over here. I don't know if it's a player or not. I guess we'll find out. But we're going to pull up from Port Olisar. Spread the wings. And take off. So here's the Scorpius Antares here. Uh, you can see the, the turret has been removed from the top. It has all the RSI markings out here, and it has that. It still looks like it has salvage damage, even though it actually doesn't, which is odd to me. Firing the weapons, you see it has the same type of weapons as Scorpius uh, for the pilot. Anyway. So let's head back into the cockpit here. We're going to go ahead and go to max speed. Or try to if the game will behave. There we go. We should see 1300. And it's actually 1303. It says 1302, so it is a little bit faster. Uh. The yaw does feel a little bit more sluggish, as it should. Uh, the pitch feels about the same. I think it's only a degree or two difference. But the roll also feels the same, even though it's a little bit more roll. So, light characteristics of the Antares. It still looks awesome because it's a Scorpius variant but I don't know what do you guys think you like it do you, do you like it at all do you think it was a cash grab <laughs> I don't want to say anything uh same type of cockpit loadout the uh two MFDs all the buttons over here on the left what's over here we got power engine over here retract for the wings left destruct eject canopy things like that same type of HUD, same shots, 63. All that is the same in the ship. So I'm going to go find a contract. We're going to do a solo bounty. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's. Hopefully we don't get shot while we're trying to do this. Since we're in space. And we're out of. I guess technically monitored space and we're out of uh, armistice. 
Oh, I hate the EVA. Let's go ahead, because we're not going to be able to use it when we uh, dogfight. Let's hop inside this gunner seat and show you what the gunner can do out here. Okay, so the gunner has power. Weapons system is off. Welcome to Robert's and they have QED on. Exit zero G. Um, anything else over here? I don't think anything else. Over there. One of the things you do have to do here is go to its power. Yeah, it's power. And if you want to use the EMP generator, you actually have to power it on manually. Turn on. Where you turn? Well, it doesn't want to turn on for me. Uh, can we turn on the tide lock? What's going on? Game is not behaving very well. Excuse me. The these things are not turning on for us. Let's hit this button. Turn QED on. Well, ladies and gents, the okay. You quantum damper dampener activate. So it looks like it is on. I don't have an on indication for the EMP generator. Usually it would create some kind of a bubble. I don't think I'm doing this wrong. I've done it a lot of times and ships. OK, so we didn't get a notification that the EMP was on. But I clicked power again and then I right clicked the mouse and we can see that the EMP does in fact turn on. We can kind of see it from the cockpit here. You know, what we don't have we don't have an EMP indicator for charge or how good it is or any of that kind of stuff. And not that we necessarily need it, but OK, and we will boom, use it. Boom, there goes the EMP. So it, it does work. I, I, when I was filming for the chase camera, I was in a Pisces and EMP knocked out all of its shields. And then I wasn't able to recharge shields for well over a minute. And I was even out of the max range. I was over 2000 meters away, So. We'll go over that in the loadout section of the ranges. So with the quantum dampener, that one's going to be red. Activate quantum dampener. So you can see this also in, I believe, the Mantis. So with this on right now, the quantum system is jammed and we actually were able to jam ourselves as well as uh, other people, but it never jammed the Pisces from quantuming. It did jam another Scorpius and it jammed uh, itself, but not the Pisces, which is really weird. So that is what the quantum dampener looks like. It's that red field. You don't have to like discharge it like the, the EMP. And also it can charge the EMP at the same time. So now we have quantum dampener going and the EMP at the same time. So your prey cannot get away and you can also blast them with the EMP just like that. So keep that in mind. You do have to use the button or, or set up some kind of a shortcut uh, to turn on and off the quantum dampener. And you're going to turn power on for the show up on there. There we go. In the power menu, you get the EMP generator. You're going to have to turn power on. It may not show it like mine. And the tide lock, you're going to have to use the button. You may have to turn it on here as well. 
So with that being said, let's get the heck out of the gutter seat. Let's go hop into the pilot seat. After a crazy EBA, I'm going to go find a mission. And we're just going to do a solo dogfight just like we did with the Scorpius. It should hopefully be the same result. Hopefully I don't get a crime stat, though. And we'll go from there. Uh, meanwhile, while I am finding that mission, I am going to subject you to some propaganda by CIG. And I'm going to turn the commercial for the RSI Scorpius on and enjoy that while we're waiting. And I'll see you on the other side of that ad and we'll go do some dog fighting. Folks, we're about to respond to a service beacon uh, for combat. If the game decides to behave. There we go. You heard my con, that's amazing. I need some help mopping up these bastards. Okay, turn off our quantum. We gotta wait for the other guys to turn bad. There we go. Alright, let's get some missiles on this guy. Oh, exchange just at the last second. Turn our gimbals on. And Aurora. Boom, shakalaka. Thanks. Is that it? No way. No way that was it. Oh my gosh, contract complete. I have all these artifacts on the screen. That was it, bro? Come on. Well, that wasn't very fun. Uh, I did take a bounty hunting uh, assessment type thing at Daymar. Okay. It's in the surface, though, so. Yeah, at least we got one mission in space. Let's see how the Antares does. In atmosphere. I do seriously want to know what you guys think about the Scorpius Antares. Do you think it was just CIG trying to make money? Pumping out another ship, or do you think it's actually like a valuable ship using squad based tactics, uh, the ability to not let your enemy quantum away, uh, things like that? I mean, it's... I am curious. Do I have to fly to this guy? Okay. <laughs> I was going to be upset. I don't particularly love the stock EOS Quantum Drive either. Uh, I would definitely recommend an upgrade when you get the chance. Maybe we'll get to fight in the daylight and I won't have to use reshade. Yeah, 
a little bit. At least it's not dark, dark. Getting dark. All right, we're headed to our target. This thing does go pretty darn fast. It, it is a solid dogfighter, uh, even for a solo ship. I mean, four size twos, nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, probably if you get better at dogfighting, you're going to want to upgrade to Nice threes. Fixed instead of a gimbal. But right, let's shoot some missiles at this guy. Boom. There we go. Let's see if they actually hit. Can't tell because he's trying to talk to me. All right. Countermeasures out. Oh, he actually, did he actually get me? I didn't take that much damage. All right, Angel in an Avenger Stalker. Ooh, yeah. See, I wouldn't want to be. Ya. Scorpius for the win, even the Antares for the win. <laughs> There we go. Contract complete. So you got to see three solo dogfights and I still haven't made up the money I had to pay for that CS2, but that's OK. So there we go, folks. Scorpius Antares. Uh, I wish there was more to do for the gunner in the backseat. I wish they could like manic shields or something like that. I think that would be really cool. But honestly, I want to know what your opinion is on the Scorpius itself or the Scorpius Antares. Both ships have uh, an incredible aesthetic. But I just I don't see the point of the Antares with. Nah, I, I see the point, but I, I just don't like it. I wish I wish there's more to do. I wish co-pilots actually had a job. So with that next section of the video coming up, thanks for watching so far and see you over there. All right, folks, let's get to it. Here is the loadout section for the Scorpius and the Scorpius Antares. We are here at Urkel.Games, the uh, DPS calculator. Scorpius, it is a heavy fighter. Combat roll, of course. Uh, it is a size two ship, crew size of one to two. Look at these hit points here, 43,600 hit points. That is massive. Um, SCM speed of two, it says 218. Uh, I don't think we got that. Uh, 1250 for max speed. We got real close to that. Here's my crash report for Star Citizen. All right. 42 degrees pitch, 37 yaw, 144 roll. Uh, standard hydrogen and quantum fuel capacity for a smaller ship. I think you pick it up at Lordville for 2.8 million alpha UVC. Now let's look at the, the pilot weapons here. We've kind of already gone over it in the video. It comes with uh, four gimbaled uh, CF-227 Badger laser repeaters. The remote turret comes with CF-447 size three, comes with four size three Panther laser repeater. The Scorpius also comes with size four missile racks, which are locked. You cannot put uh, size four missiles in them. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm sorry. You can't swap out the missile racks to use size four missiles or size three missiles. You have to use size two. And the ones that comes with the Tempest two cross section are really nice. I really like them. I think you should leave them on. I also think you should leave the remote turret alone. Um, but for the main weapons, I would probably swap them out to fix size threes, which we will do here in just a minute. Shields, full stop military grade C shield. Uh, it's okay, 9,000 hit points. We got Regulus military grade C power plants. They are fine. If you look at our power over here, we're under half, so it is just fine to use those. No need to swap them out. The uh, polar coolers, uh, plenty of cooling in here. Uh, leave those alone. Uh, the quantum drive needs some improvement. Uh, 
EOS Civilian Grade C. It's, 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 I don't know. It can do Crusader to Hurston in five and a half minutes. But looking over here at the damage, the sustained damage, 612 DPS with burst damage of 1600. And the turret with 1130 sustained burst. Missiles in total do 26,000 damage if they were to all fire at once. 9,000 hit points on our shields. And our EM and IR signatures are quite high. We also have a 53% physical damage reduction. So let's go ahead and make some upgrades here. We'll swap out that size, these size threes for, uh, let's go with just Panthers because there's no different now. Um, and they are cheaper. Panther weapon. And now our sustained damage is 652 of 2000. So upgraded that. Not a huge, huge difference, but better. Our shields, I would get rid of the full stop at 9,000 and go with uh, FR-76 size 2. That gives us uh, 1,300 more hit points, so the ability to live a little bit longer in a fight. Power plants, I would still leave the same because we are still under half of power utilization. Those are fine. And I would upgrade the quantum drive to a civilian, either a Voyage or an Atlas. Voyage is a little bit faster. Atlas at 151. Uh, takes you about, still about five minutes, uh, 23 seconds to get from Hurston to Seder. Voyage takes five minutes, 11 seconds. And I believe it's cheaper and easier to find. So that's what I would recommend for the, basically the upgraded loadout, the Scorpius. Let's go ahead and put these items into the cart. If I can remember how to do that. Yep, there we go. And we'll pull up the cart. You can see, let's see where we can get the stuff. Center mass at area 18. Machine point. Well, everything is kind of all over the place. Can we get everything at Orison? No, we can't. So the Panther laser repeaters Probably best new Babbage or Area 18. The the Voyage, you can pick that up at Orison or by Genie Point. Um, either way, they're they're about the same amount. Um, but if you're at Orison, then you can also go to Cousin Crows and pick up the FR76. The upgrades total about eighty nine thousand five hundred and fifty, and I think you're ready to rock after that. And take out some bad guys. So we will actually, I need to close that up and we will go ahead and select the Scorpius Antares. As you can see, no turret, boo, but it does have the, it has the same, well, before I go down there, <laughs> let's look at some of the stats real quick. Uh, same amount of hit points, 43,000, um, a little bit better roll over here, 150 degrees per second. Uh, the rest of the stats are pretty much the same. The pilot weapons are all the same, um, as are the components, except for that extra Regulus military Z power plant. Which I would also leave alone because we're well under halfway point for power. So for upgrades, I would again do the, these are repeaters just like I did on the regular Scorpius and I would go uh, Panthers go ahead and knock that out real quick for the shields again i would go with the fr76 uh quantum drive i would upgrade that to the voyage and then coming down here the emp uh notice the little lock over here on the screen that means it is bespoke you cannot change it but it does come with a mag strand size 4 emp generator the let's see if i stats on this guy nope. it does 2750 damage to shields uh it's range 250 meters minimum 1100 maximum i was 2000 away in the pisces and it it hit me so i don't know if that range is actually accurate it takes 27 seconds to fully charge one and a half seconds to unleash 22 seconds for cooldown or you can charge it back up 
And uh, yeah, it does add to, you know, your EM signature and all this stuff, which is quite higher uh, at 16,000 here. <clears throat> yeah, so interesting uh, that the Tidelock QD, it is a new quantum enforcement device just for the Antares. It is size three. The jammer range says 2,000 meters, but we had folks that were jammed uh, about 3,800 meters away. They were jammed, and that could just be 318 and the state of the game being a little, a little odd, right now. a little bit odd right now. Um, it does take 30 seconds to charge. It says it has a snare radius, but uh, it's really a jammer. Uh, Activation time three seconds, disperse charge time five, amount time two minutes. Turn it off before you turn it back on. And yeah, it adds a little bit to your EM as well. So that is the Scorpio Centauri's. Um, and that is the conclusion of the loadout. This may be the fastest loadout I've ever done for two ships, but there you go. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching so far.
all right guys that wraps up the video i hope you guys had a good time with it uh i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below of what you thought about the rsi scorpius and the uh the rsi antares my personal opinions i i really really enjoy the scorpius i think it's a great ship i think it's probably the best heavy fighter in the game i'm definitely planning on keeping it keeping it and i think it's going to be our primary dogfighter at least for a while uh, i don't plan to give up my vanguard but i have no plans on purchasing a hurricane because the scorpius fills all those roles and it's it's tougher it's stronger it's a better ship so it's also more expensive <laughs> I, at least i think it is who knows with the pricing nowadays, but I, I am really curious on what you guys think about the Antares. Do you think it's a ship worth purchasing? Do you think the squad tactics of it using the quantum jammer and the EMP device are worth it? Or do you think, uh, you know, the Vanguard Sentinel is, you know, kind of where it's at? I'm curious to know what you think of that ship. Do you think it's worth the price tag? Do you think it was a cash grab by CIG? It, I don't know. It, it irks me. It, it's such a cool ship that it's a Scorpius. But I, yeah, I think I'm going to CCU mine or melt it or I don't plan on keeping it because I, at the end of the day, I'd rather have a Mantis or I'd rather have a Vanguard Sentinel probably even a cutlass blue because it has more multi-role so anyway thank you guys for watching hope you had a good time uh it was fun filming this thank you to the b team for helping film this if you guys are interested in joining the b team or java with java or just hanging out with us on stream or in the discord please hop into the discord at the uh link in the description doobly do thing below the video uh, we do stream every thursday night at 7 p.m mountain and we stream uh java with java streams on sunday mornings at 9 a.m mountain time and that's the more relaxed stream mining salvage things like that money making and we are doing some giveaways coming up we uh, are close to 3,000 subs and we're going to be doing a ship giveaway. We're going to give away a HOTAS, and there's even a special bonus giveaway in there. No purchase necessary. Check out the Discord for the rules on the giveaway. You do have to be on the stream when it's going down. Yeah. And if you are a paid member of the org, um, the B team or Java with Java meeting, you donate on on uh, Patreon, or you're a YouTube channel member, or you are a Twitch subscriber, you get an automatic entry, whether you're here or not, because you are a paid member. And you help us keep making videos and keeping the lights on and all that kind of stuff, so I encourage you to at least maybe donate. Uh, Joe and I usually just turn all this money right back into the org and the giveaways and all that stuff. Uh, and it's not much, trust me, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> we don't get that many views. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. I am Fist25. Good night, Stanton.